पाक कुलभूषण जाधव के गल शिषे प्रकरण के संबंध अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट नचारण आरंभ वे ना दिन विचारण नडसल है अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट पाकिस्तान कुलभूषण जाधव के गल शिषे प्रकरण के संबंध कुलभूषण जाधव प्रकरण विचारण आरंभगे अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट नचारण आरंभ वे दि हेग न अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट नचारण शुरुआत ना दिन विचारण नड़ल है फेब्रवरी इनक यह विचारण नड़ल है प्रकरण विचारण फेब्रवरी इनक हेगन अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट नड़ल है भारत पर हरिश् सावे नेतृत्व तद मंडने आता है पाक कुलभूषण जाधव के गल शिषे प्रकरण के संबंध विचारण नड़ीता है अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट नचारण आरंभ वे हेग न अंतर्राष्ट्रीय कॉर्ट ना दिन विचारण नड़ीये अरे फेब्रवरी इनक विचारण नड़ल and its paraphrase finds place in the document circulated to the P5 countries the document notes that this gentleman has been operating as a businessman in chahbahar it alleges jadav crossed over from iran to baluchistan and the document alleges he is a commander in the indian navy he concludes it concludes by making serious allegations against india of state sponsored terrorism and of repeating its efforts of 1971 in baluchistan you will be surprised to find despite all this towards the end of their mem counter memorial one of the defenses is that india has not established his nationality there is no manner of doubt that pakistan <coughs> was using this as a propaganda tool pakistan was bound to grant consular access without delay india's request for access did not evoke any response In para nine of its memorial, India asserts that Pakistan's conduct suggests that even Jadhav was not informed of his right to consular access, and this is not contradicted in the counter memorial. On 30th March 16, India reminded Pakistan of its request for consular access, and received no reply to its communication. Thirteen reminders were sent by India on various dates, and I will deal with them in my narrative. Pakistan acknowledges that as early as 30 March 2016 the Indian High Commission in Islamabad sent a note verbal to Pakistan's Minister of Foreign Affairs requesting consular access. Pakistan obviously had no difficulty in recognizing that the request related to Jadhav. India has no papers or authentic information of what happened in Pakistan. The information in public domain in relation to Jadhav's alleged arrest and trial was first found in the statement of Mr. Sartaj Aziz made on 14th April 2017. The public announcement by the adviser to the Prime Minister sets out the steps that led to Jadhav's conviction and the award of a death sentence. Assuming them to be correct, my narrative will set out the course of events which followed. 8th April 2016, as I said, an FIR was allegedly registered. On 15th April 2016, Pakistan notified envoys of the members of the Arab League and of the Association of the South East Asian Nations, the ASEAN, who were "quote unquote" briefed. After the registration of the FIR, Jadhav was supposedly interrogated on 2nd May 2016, and again on 22nd May 2016. India sent a reminder the first reminder for consular access on 6th May the second reminder was sent on 10th June the third reminder on 11th July proceedings appear to have continued in the meanwhile in Pakistan and on 12th July a joint in court joint investigation team uncourt was allegedly constituted the steps taken by this so called joint investigation team including any further interrogation of jadhav is not known The press statement states that a quote confessional statement unquote was recorded under what is section 164 of the Pakistan Code of Criminal Procedure. In the meanwhile India continued to remind Pakistan of its request for consular access and sent a fourth reminder on 26 July and a fifth reminder on 22nd August 2016. 
On 6 September 2016, it appears that a supplementary FIR was registered. Purportedly basing its itself on the alleged confessional statement, the supplementary FIR named high functionaries in India, along with other persons, connected to smuggling syndicates on the allegation that these were Jadhav's, quote, handlers, organization, person, accomplices, and facilitators. On 21st September 2016, it appears that the first hearing of the field general court martial was held. On 24th September, the summary of evidence was recorded. India sent Pakistan a sixth reminder for consular access on 3rd November 2016. Even this received no reply. The next field general court martial proceedings appear to be held on 29th of November 2016. On 19th December 2016, India sent a seventh reminder to Pakistan for consular access. But there was again no response. On 2nd January 2017, the advisor to the Prime Minister, Mr. Sartaz Aziz, wrote to the Secretary General of the United Nations, stating that the law enforcement agencies had apprehended an agent of Indian intelligence and that Jadav had made a confessional statement admitting his involvement in, quote, activities aimed at destabilizing Pakistan, unquote. It went on to add that the arrest of Kulbushan Jadav in his confessional statement has vindicated Pakistan's long-standing position that India is involved in activities at destabilizing Pakistan, unquote. It invites, invited the United Nations and its bodies to, open quote, play their role in restraining India from these activities, unquote. On 23rd January 17, Pakistan sent a note verbal without seeking assistance in what they call the investigation of a case registered in the FIRs 6 of 2016 of 8th April and 22 of 2016 of 6 September in police station CTD Baluchistan against Indian National. The letter of assistance that was attached stated that during the process of investigation and interrogation, Jadav had revealed the name of his so-called handlers and it sought India's assistance in obtaining statements of high functionaries and other named officials of the Indian Naval Service. Surprisingly, it also sought assistance in obtaining the evidence of Jadav's wife. It sought assistance in coercive steps, such as searching Jadav's house, a certified record of his cell phone for the last 10 years, and certified copies of his bank accounts in his and his family's name. It attached a number of documents, such as the first information report, etc. On 3rd February, India, by its note verbal, reminded Pakistan for the eighth time of its request to provide immediate consular access. It expressed concern over the continued denial of consular access and about Jadav's treatment in Pakistan custody. We said, especially about his coerced purported confession and the circumstances of his presence in Pakistan, which remain unexplained. It appears that the trial was concluded on 12th February 2017. India sent a ninth remand on 3rd March 2017 for consular access. On 21st March 2017, Pakistan replied to the communication of 3rd March, stating that the case for consular access to Indian National Kulbushan Jadav shall be considered in the light of India side's response to Pakistan's request for assistance in investigation process and early dispensation of justice. The court would have noticed that the trial already had concluded on 12th February 2017. On 31st March 2017, India replied to Pakistan's communication of 21st March 2017 pointing out that consular access would be an essential prerequisite to verify the facts and understand the circumstances of Jadav's presence in Pakistan, and for the 10th time requested immediate consular access. A press release was issued by the Inter-Services Public Relations Pakistan on 10th April 2017, which announced that Jadav had been tried by the FGCM under the Pakistan Army Act and awarded the death sentence. And that on that day, the chief of army staff had confirmed the death sentence awarded to him. It stated that, quote, 
the accused was provided with defending officer as per legal provisions, unquote. No lawyer. Pakistan, by its communication of 10th April 2017, responded to India's note verbal of 31st March 2017, repeating that the case for consular access shall be considered in the light of India's response to Pakistan's request for assistance in the investigation process, which was pending with the Indian side. India responded by its note verbal on the same date protesting that despite repeated requests, access had not been permitted and pointed out that in any event, the offer of consular access after his death sentence had been awarded and confirmed appeared farcical. A statement was made in the Indian Parliament by the Honorable External Affairs Minister on 11th April 2017, setting out the position of the government of India. The statement described him as a kidnapped Indian and a victim of a plan that seeks to cast aspersions on India to deflect international attention from Pakistan's well-known record of sponsoring and supporting terrorism. On 14th April 2017, the advisor to Pakistan's Prime Minister on Foreign Affairs, Mr. Sartaz Adish, issued his press statement. The statements of significance to the present case are as follows. First, he said, Jadav, quote, is serving commander of the Indian Na Navy and working with Indian Intelligence Agency, RAW, unquote, was apprehended on 3rd March 2016, after he illegally crossed over into Pakistan from the Saravan border in Iran. He said he was tried by the Field, court, field General Court Martial under Section 59 of the Pakistan Army Act and under three of the Official Secret Act. Jada was provided with a legal counsel in accordance with our provisions of law, he said. He said Jadav confessed before a magistrate and the court that he was tasked by Indian intelligence agency, RAW, to plan, coordinate, organize espionage, and sabotage activities aimed at destabilizing and waging war against Pakistan. Unsurprisingly, the court found Jadav guilty, as it has found many others. The espionage case against Jadav was tried by the FGCM and concluded under the Pakistan Army Act and the Official Secret Act. His sentence for espionage was endorsed on 10th April 2017, the steps which as per this press statement were taken to ensure transparency were, his confessional statement was recorded before a magistrate under 164 of the CRPC. This was of course much after his first confession had already been aired to the world. A law qualified field officer was provided to defend him throughout the court proceedings. A statement of witnesses was recorded under oath in the presence of the accused. And in the court, Jadhav was allowed to ask questions from the witnesses. During the trial, a fully qualified law officer of the Judge Advocate General branch remained a part of the court. It went on to assert, and something which will be relevant for the final relief, that all political parties are unanimous that the award of death penalty awarded to a foreign spy is the correct decision. The whole nation is solidly united against any threat to Pakistan's security. On 14th April 2017, India sought consular access for the 14th. Park Nida Kulabushan Jadoge Galushikshe Prakaranake Sambandasidante, Heg Naliro, Antarastria Court Nali Vicharane, Naditaide, Nalkudinakalakala, Nadivantaha Vicharane, Model Eredu Dina, Park, Bharata, Para, Vakilru, Vaduana, Mandisilitare, Bharata, Para. Wakila Harish Salve Vadavana Mandasidre Park Para Mohammad Khan Wakilro Mohammad Khan Vadavana Mandasledare and Alkudinagala Kala Yvicharane Nadialita misadventure in trying to publicly air the confession and raise the issue relating to his passport did not succeed in the court. The Pakistan letter requested uh, stated that the request took the form that is internationally recognized. I will show you why this is plainly wrong in due course. The letter stated that some of the evidence underpinning the allegation has been made available to India. To be clear, Jadav is unlikely to have been convicted and awarded the death sentence merely because he had, as alleged by Pakistan, a passport in a different name which would hide his identity. He was presumably found guilty of serious offenses which carried the death penalty as a punishment. 
Pakistan has steadfastly refused to disclose which specific events, which specific offenses related to which specific events in relation to which Jadav now stands convicted. The letter then audaciously states that it was, quote, incumbent upon the government of India to explain, unquote, the passport issue. And it closed by saying, open quote, to facilitate the Republic of India's compliance, the request is provided again, unquote. On 26th October 2017, Pakistan wrote to India reiterating its stand which it had taken in the communication of 30th August, but added, and I quote, without prejudice to the proceedings so far, government of Pakistan is prepared to consider. Ibagi Hichina details in Akurta and Ama Pratini, Prashant Natu Durmani Samparka Dalitare, Prashant, Pulvama, Ugradalia, Nantra, Bharata, Mutu, Pakistan, and Naduvina, Sampanda, Tira, Hadigitro, E. Paristitia, Le, Kulubushan, Jada, Vicharane, Antarashtri, and Yaya, Le, the Li, Aktaide, Yavritia, and Tawandu, Mahatu, and Napa, Kondi, Jotege, Wada, Prativada, Yavriti, Neditaide. Shredder Egastre, Hagnal is the Kantar, International Court of Justice, Nali, Bharata, Mutu, Pakistan, and the पर वकील रू वादा प्रतिवाद वन आराम दिखता रहे भारत प्रवागी अत्यंत हिरिया कॉन्स्टिट्यूशनल सत्या हरी साल में वादा वन मंडस्ता इधर रहे प्रमुख वाकी ये नेला घटना वाली गलो नडी तो उनका कंधा देना कोर्ट के हरी साल में विवर्ता इधर रहे अर्थात सर दा हदना रहली ईरान सरवन बॉर्डर नली कुलभूषण one to worst the military court, Nali Athanenge, Marana than a six and a Kuda Vidus Lagate, Ivello Kuda Far Sagir Takanta, Aropagalu, Sapu Aropolo, Sulu Aropolo and Takatadana, Haris Salve, Antarastia, Coltke, Viver Spider, Nishitwagi, Igagle, CRP of Yodara, Undu Gatne and Nantara, CRP of Gatne and Nanta, Fulbama Gatne and Nantara, Bartha Pakistan, Nadue, Igagle, Unduriti Agir Takanta. Yudha Maya Vata Varana Nirmana Magita Kantasandar Dali, Purvush and Jadha Ukrakarana Ukuda Nishitwagi, Yeldu Rashtra and Nadavina Sambandavana, Inashtu, Sikata Ke, Yes, sir. Thank you. Prashant Nimila details.